Hi everyone. Many are still asking what happened with me lately. So this video is a transcript of an article I just wrote for my blog ourspiritualquest.com Laura Maxwell's response to being censored I literally burst into tears when I was told my shows had caused problems to an entire radio network and their associated YouTube channel. We're seeing more and more censorship these days. We know more people who disagree with governments and media outlets will be silenced. History repeats itself. Propaganda has always existed. It always will. We also know the day will come when the Christian voice in particular will be completely silenced. Until then, when we face these setbacks or any type of persecution, with the power of Christ and prayers from each other, we overcome and persevere. Romans 8.31 reminds us that God calls us all to be more than conquerors. If the Lord has definitely led you to something, then, if you remain obedient and willing, he will empower you to see it through. If God is for us, who can be against us? I thought of the famous line quoted by the William Wallace character from the Braveheart film. Of course, I adapted it for the situation here. You can take away our internet, but you'll never take away our freedom in Christ. You know, how, how true is that? So... What just happened and why? My deleted shows included what I feel were my best interviews over the last decade on topics such as satanic ritual abuse, particularly during Halloween, and even how Halloween itself is literally promoted by the New Age movement and the New World Order. Agenda. Yes, Halloween itself. I actually provide much source material and quotes and evidence in these programmes. And of course, I also referred to my own background in the New Age movement. As it was October, I'd been uploading my shows that exposed Satanism, particularly in relation to Halloween. So, why did the platforms Spreaker and YouTube complain? Well, they gave several reasons. For example, that my work broke the community guidelines or that there was a bug in the system. So, let's, let's look at that. Interestingly, having reviewed the list of my shows that they'd flag up, I would have to disagree um, that they infringed these community guidelines. My work does not incite hatred. In fact, anyone familiar with my interviews going back to 2008 will know that I'm always actually very careful that myself and others in my interviews speak the truth in love. Ironically, this is something people have always said is, is actually quite characteristic of my ministry. You know, and even if I talk about, for example, Luciferian or, or satanic leaders in my interviews, I don't just expose such dark deceptions. I also go on to share the gospel's message of Christ's forgiveness for anyone who turns to him, including such leaders. You know, I don't just um, talk about it and throw stones at them. I will talk about Christ's forgiveness for them too, if they wanted to come to him. I often use the Apostle Paul as a great example, for he killed Christians before his conversion and transformation. 
So in my interviews with the ex-Satanists, with the ex-occultists and so on, we do emphasise how Christ can totally turn a life around. So how would my shows, which highlight the gospel message of God's love and mercy, be regarded, regarded as incitement towards hatred? <laughs> Rather, I feel my shows and shows like mine can encourage people to think more deeply for themselves about spiritual things and also about the satanic backing behind government corruption and so on. So what about the other reason given for flagging up my shows? A bug. Was there really a bug in the system? Perhaps this is true. It could well be. But who knows? Many of my peers feel such reasons are often given to those whose work is actually being censored. And I'll say a little more on that soon. Ray Gano. Some of you may know Ray Gano and, and he feels that my work is being targeted and censored. Just as we have all seen happen to so many folks in recent times, including, I suppose, the, the well-known case of um, Alex Jones, the reporter of Infowars. Now, whether you agree with Alex Jones or not isn't even really the issue. You know, the guy's stuff has been censored. Freedom of speech. <laughs> you know, this is actually serious. This is an attack on our freedom of speech. It's an attack on the very ability to, to debate. It's an attack on the sharing of, of opinion. It's an attack on the gospel. And it's an attack on exposing corruption and satanic deception. So what actually took place? What happened with me recently there? Well, a day or so before Halloween, my friend John McMahon contacted me. Spreaker had emailed him complaining of my episodes on his network. They advised him to delete all my episodes from his network, Fringe Radio Network, on the Spreaker platform. Not only that, but the associated FRN YouTube channel had also got in touch and complained to him about my shows. Is that a coincidence? <laughs> you decide. And you know, it was only just recently that John McMahon had invited me to join FRN as a new host there. He runs FRN and he explained to me these complaints had risked his entire Spreaker radio network. So he had to delete my Spreaker channel and all my shows. And it clearly also risked the entire FRN YouTube channel being deleted. He simply had no choice and was thus forced to delete all of my 15 shows from FRN on Spreaker. He had to go and delete them plus another 18 pl 800 plus shows from the YouTube channel too. 800 plus shows. These programmes were created by his many radio hosts and their guests going back for years. Now, obviously, John McMahon reviewed the, the emails that were sent to him by, by Spreaker and by YouTube. And um, he told me himself that he felt it was just as if there was a target on my back. <laughs> 